let's talk to Caleb in Maryland. Uh, Caleb, welcome to the show. You've got a little bit of a problem with a friend who's religious. Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of a, yeah, navigating a conversation. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, so um, just for background, um, her religious belief is more deistic. Like, she believes that, like, an undiscovered scientific force is God, just as kind of, like, context. But okay. um, we were having a conversation one day, like we usually do at work, and uh, she's been going through a lot recently. And um, she made the uh, comment that the hardest thing about being religious is that you can't help but feel during those moments that maybe is God like punishing you. And I didn't know like how to navigate that um, with the idea of like avoiding like derailing into a, well, does God actually exist conversation? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Interesting. So your friend is a deist who has a Mm -hmm. concept of a God who is still active in the way the world works. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I, I asked her point blank uh, once if she considered herself more theistic or, or deistic, because uh, she's uh, Jewish but not orthodox, and she said she felt she was more deistic. So Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, here's here's my thing with that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I take this, this particular track with my family sometimes as well, which is my mm-hmm. little my little brother um was expressing to me how he did not need to worry about where he was going to be going to college because it didn't matter because God would put him where he needed to be. And I mm-hmm. said, wow, that sounds like a really useful way to think about it. Right? It sounds mm-hmm. like a way, like, like it sounds like thinking about it in that way is alleviating a lot of stress. That sounds like a cool coping mechanism. And of course, he was like, well, it's not a co- it's not a coping mechanism. It's real. Like this is this is just how things are. Yeah. I was like, okay, okay. But that to me is the best way forward when somebody is being vulnerable with you and you don't want to mm-hmm. derail the conversation into, you know, God doesn't exist. Then what right. I would do is say to your friend, that sounds like a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself right now. Like mm-hmm. It feels like you are choosing to, or maybe not even choosing, but it sounds like you're, you're making this your fault somehow. Why, why do you think that it's your fault? And Mm -hmm. maybe that can help bring the conversation somewhere that's still helpful and hears her, makes her feel seen, but doesn't play into the, why do you think God is punishing you angle so much as why do you think that this might be your fault in some way? Because mm-hmm. honestly, it is easier to think that you are in control, you fucked up, and now God is punishing you than dealing with some horrible, horrible shit for no fucking reason, right? That is the scary yeah. thing. It is 10 times scarier yeah. to think that things just fucking happen to you and happen to the people that you love and there's nothing you can do to, to prevent it. There's no way you can be better next time. There's no way to mitigate the punishment by doing or saying the correct thing. It's just going to happen. And I think mm-hmm. that for a lot of people, there's this instinctual need to take ownership and to center themselves in whatever is happening. I'm the main character of my story. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I must have done something to warrant this. Or right. maybe this is preparing me for something else or maybe i'm supposed to use this for another reason like all of it is about how it's affecting me and that's understandable that's human brains that's how we work but i think that focusing on that part and being very empathetic and very understanding and saying hey i get it we need to center ourselves in these in these moments. That's just how we're wired. Why do you think this could be your fault? Or why do you think you might be receiving this punishment? And really maybe try and get in through that that door. Yeah, I think um I think some of that that you hit on is probably what she was also struggling with as well. Like they dealt with uh 
um, a health issue at their apartment, her and her partner, um, that was basically due to neglect from the landlord. And I think like, it's hard, it's harder to just accept the fact that there's crappy people in the world that do things like that than to think, well, this, I must've done something to warrant being in this situation. Yep. Oh man. See, yeah. this is, this is where, this is where my, um, anti-capitalist side kicks into high gear and I'm like, ooh. Instead of even mm. thinking about talking about like, well, why do you feel like God is punishing you? Be like, aren't mm. landlords awful? <laughs> Don't they fucking right, exactly. suck? <laughs> what what can yeah. we do to make yeah. that better? Is there is there a, a local law we can pass about health standards? Something like, if if what she wants is to feel like this is preparing her for something, or if she wants to do something with this upset, this anger, this hurt, whatever, there are avenues that are actually really helpful. But as long as you're thinking, yeah. this is God doing something to me, that avenue of actually being helpful and effective in the real world is kind of closed off, right? It now becomes a conversation exactly. between you and this imaginary deity, as opposed to, as it should be, right. a conversation with that fucking landlord who is causing the exactly. issue. <laughs> so yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting though. I never, that's that's a really great perspective because I didn't think about like, kind of like taking the conversation in a d different direction because I have my own issues with uh, capitalism that have become more developed over the last year or so. But I didn't think about like taking it more of a like a political, I guess, direction instead of like trying to find a way to uh, make it work with the religious direction it was currently going. Yeah, and either can work and you don't need to do either of them. But I think that for somebody who is not tied so closely to that idea of maybe like a, a God in the same way that an evangelical or a fundamentalist would be, if what she's dealing with is mm -hmm. this sense of injustice, um, it could be really helpful for her and very cathartic to say, okay, you are feeling this thing. This is real. Instead of focusing on a God who you think may or may not be a cause of this, let's wh what can we do with this that is going to help you in the future and help other people and you know put the put the responsibility where it where it belongs, which is on the people who are mm -hmm. causing this problem. So it might be helpful in that way as well. Okay. All right, excellent. Yeah, I think those are all great points, and I'll um I'll definitely mull over those, and if this conversation comes up again, I'll probably use one of them and see how it goes. Cool, cool. If it does happen again, and you do use them, uh, call back. I'd love to hear how things went. Excellent, excellent. Sounds good. Okay, thanks, Caleb. You're welcome. Bye. Oh man, we're getting political in this right now. Oh, okay. 